Welcome to Contained Animal, a podcast about decisions in gaming, where we take an animal's problems, break it into chunks, and make a decision for them. We're here with Joe, Lee, Aaron, and I'm Jason. And Joe is going to be our host tonight. Animal. That's me, I'm Joe. Welcome to Contained Animal. Contained Animal is a great game, and you're going to have a lot of fun listening as we have a lot of fun playing. Um, so in, in each episode of Contain Animal, we're going to have a scenario, right? And we are all a part of the animal that is engaged in this hypothetical scenario. And we are going to um, take some time and think about the issues surrounding that scenario and then come up with a decision as to what the animal does. And then you who are listening, should you choose to, um, can decide who wins. And then that person is going to get a prize. And that is going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, is there any ado before I get started? No ado. No ado. No ado. No ado. All right. Nope. All right. So today's animal is a dog. It's a big multiplayer game, and dog makes a non-aggression pact with moose. Feeling safe with dog on her flank, moose appears ready to win the game and will likely do so unless dog intervenes. The other players accuse dog of king making and urge her to intervene. Should, what does dog do? So that's what we have to decide. But we don't need to decide that now, and we don't even need to talk about that now. But that's kind of the frame for what is to follow. So, first issue, does it break the game to have your own parameters within the game that are beyond the parameters that the game sets up? I think it tends to. Oh, I disagree. <clears throat> Interesting. We have dissension. Yay, good. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's too bad. Let's work on that. I see people who, um, I don't know, they might get bored with the game or might not understand a good strategy for the game and might take it in a different direction than the others are playing and, and it causes some conflict in the game. For example, just played a, a game of Risk Legacy lately. It's, uh, I think, the seventh game in the, in the series we've played now. We've opened up a lot of the packets. It's been very exciting. But um, <clears throat> to keep someone from squirreling away down in Australia, we had someone who, on their starting move, blocked them in for no other reason than just to make it a totally different game than what we played. Um, the game lasted 10 minutes because two <laughs> people fought from the very start. The third person kind of did their own thing, and they actually, uh, it, it was not as fun as it could have been because um, the intent was just mm. to take out the person who was in Australia at the very start of the game. I see. So there was this kind of, there was this thing outside of the game from a past game that informed their decision to do this in this game. Yeah, made for made for some crazy play. You were playing it three player. That was a three player, yes. Yeah. I think that it can left happen one. a lot in a risk. And it left player. one person out in the out alone without anything really to do. And I guess I guess it does depend on the type of game it is. Going to earlier in the conversation in a game like Innovation or Gloria Rome, mm -hmm. I, I think having your own objectives in a game like that where it's very exploratory, it doesn't necessarily break the game. It might not give you a chance to win it. But I don't. I don't know about breaking it. I see what you mean. So because there are lots of strategies that could be involved, that could be uh, employed by people, and they're still playing all the same game. I see what you mean. Now, but here's what I wonder. So if you're if you're like when I play innovation, I sometimes am not necessarily going for the points or the achievements or, or whatever. Um, I might just be like trying to build up my board because that's what's fun to me at that moment. In a way, my kind of goal of the game changes from that which is specified in the rule book. So am I, am I then still playing the same game as the other people I'm playing with, or are we just playing kind of like parallel, overlapping game? Probably parallel. Yeah, because your objectives are different, but it's the same game. So I would see that as parallel. And there are several games that get accused of being multiplayer solitaire because everyone's playing mm. parallel games without the same, within the same framework. So going back to the original question, does it break the game? Jason, you said you didn't think it did, if you have your own parameters. Lee, you said you thought it did. Uh, Aaron, you didn't really say what you thought. The dog said, what's your dog's name, Bianca? Bianca, Bianca. yeah. Bianca, I, I don't understand what Bianca's trying to say at all. She's very upset, so I think she thinks it does. She thinks it does break the game. Yeah. The animal, my problem is I don't have many, much experience playing those types of games, so I don't, I don't know if it does. I could see how it would, though, because you kind of have one person just doing their own thing, not really participating in but the actual game. But they're still reacting to the people around them, right? So right, not like right. In a bubble. They're not truly playing by themselves, they just have a different set of criteria. Yeah, and, and I hate to give a wishy-washy answer, but I, I think it does depend on on the type of game. Like, 
you're playing Carcassonne if you want to build the biggest city and that's all you're concerned about. It's not going to hurt it for anybody else. But if you're playing something like maybe Andy and Abyss and you're the government and you're just trying to control, you know, a specific one specific city that you don't control at the beginning of the game, just because you think that would be fun, that that might that might break that game. That messes up the series of checks and balances. Yeah. The game assumes it's going to be in place to keep one person, one side from being overly powerful. Right. It sounds like that's what happened in Lee's legacy game as well, correct? Yeah, and it was done kind of in jest or in fun, um, just to see what would happen at the start of the game. And everything played within the parameters of the game. But the uh, the intention wasn't to build up the biggest army in your section and then move in. It was just to... Uh, Pop down right next to another person starting thing and see if you could knock them out from the start. And it seems like that would be maybe not upsetting, but more. I mean, in something like Risk Legacy, where the games have a lasting impact, <laughs> that's that's definitely you know more than doing your own thing in Dominion, or, or the ripples of of your game breaking decision kind of kind of ripple through time. That's that's interesting. And you brought up. Um, some other games that I that made me think about Carcassonne. We have one player that we play with who's whose only goal is to try and get into somebody's city that's already been built and established. Mm-hmm. And I guess it breaks down the. I mean, that's that's a perfectly viable thing to do. But um, when you do it game after game after game, and you know that's going to be his intent, it uh, it wears you down. Well, yeah, I could I could see not wanting to play like that. Yeah, it would be a different game. But so here's what I wonder. Is, is it a different game anyway, depending on who you play with? Then, since everyone, uh, assuming that everyone you play with in a game is going to behave different, right? Like, even if everyone's striving for the same goal, they're not going to play the game the same way. So you're going to have this variation based on who you're playing with anyway. Is that what makes that that sort of goal changing different than the way they go about reaching the goal? Maybe just Maybe varying, varying degrees. degrees. So it's more intense when they change the goal of the game. Right. right. And it's not always oh, bad. bad. There's, there's, I guess we put a, a negative spin on this or negative connotation, but it's just a, a different flavor of the game. There are games that I'll play with certain friends, and I know that it'll lean one direction the way we play, and games that we play with other friends where conflict won't be involved and it'll be a more peaceful game. So it's just different flavors, I guess. Um, not necessarily good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with what Lee said. It's just more of a different, a different, maybe a different vibe. It doesn't always have to be a negative thing. Yeah. Now here's a question. Um, so the complexity of someone's goals, does that make it more or less acceptable for them to have different goals. What I mean is, it seems like in a lot of the negative examples, what's negative about it is they're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again, or what they're doing is just kind of very basic and doesn't really have a, a larger link into everything else that's going on. If someone has like a, a more complex set of goals or like a personal code that they're following in the game, is that more or less acceptable than a simpler? The, their personal goals or the, the goals that are within the context of the game? Um, the goals they have within the context of the game, which can be influenced by the goals outside of the context of the game. Like uh, Lee's legacy example, his goal was kind of brought from outside the context of that particular game because it had to do with a, a past game. And the goal in our scenario where the dog might or might not uh, intervene one reason dog might not intervene with moose is because dog foresees playing future games with moose and doesn't want to, you know, ruin the trust he has built up with moose or she has built up with moose that might, you know, impact future games. I think when outside circumstances influence the gameplay and the structure of the game, if it's above board and people know about it, I think it's more acceptable. But I think when it's hidden is when it's when it can be very damaging because it, if everyone assumes that everyone's playing within a certain set of parameters, not knowing that maybe one or two people have a, a, a different set of parameters they're playing under, they've, they've made a, an alliance or a truce of some sort that no one else knows about, it could hurt everyone else's understanding of how everyone should be playing, which is you know to win, to be the best, to be the victor or whatever, not to assist someone else. Is it ever, so it, it's, we would, we've been talking about acceptable, acceptability, right? Which, which does kind of give it a negative, Connotation. Is it ever desirable to have your own parameters overlapping the parameters of the game or 
in lieu of the, the parameters given by the game. I think for me, certain s- certain games, I might I might do something like that. Um, and especially if I'm in a situation I don't necessarily want to be in, or I'm not getting what I wanted out of the social interactions of the game, I might just kind of pull with it. Um, and still, you know, I'm never out for blood with a win. Um, so maybe that has a lot to do with that. I played right. games where, where the parameters changed with players who maybe wanted to speed up play to get to something else. So winning wasn't as important as just completing the game. So they did whatever they could to bring it to a conclusion, whether it was beneficial to them or not. So I've seen parameters change within a game like that because of uh, outside influences. Right. And that I've, I've, I've been in that situation, too. That always kind of annoys me a little bit, just when that happens. If there are people who want to still engage with the game, it feels like it takes takes that away from them. You feel like you've been robbed a little bit of the end game. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you've invested your your time and yourself and your heart in what's going on and then yeah, someone kind of just takes it away from you or All right, let's move on to another issue. Do you want to move on to another issue, Aaron? I do. All right. So we're kind of getting at a, a different codes, right? So there's the the code of the game is sort of a, a governmental code. Right? It's something like the laws that you're supposed to follow, that we all kind of follow. How would our society look if the only code people followed was the code of law? Just kind of imagine for a moment what the world would look like if you stepped out of your house and everyone was only following the letter of the law and nothing else. Hmm. I think our laws would be a lot more specific. Yeah, they would. We would have more of them. Yeah, there would be more of them. And I and I even wonder, I mean, that would have to take us out of human nature because I don't even think, try as we might, human nature would allow us to do that. But, you know, I think things would be, we would have a lot more laws. And would we be even able to follow them then? so many well i think i think so because we follow them now and they aren't written down they're just some things that you just don't do i don't think people follow all the laws i I mean no no it's it's just not i mean right now i think there's probably too many for people to follow all the laws and there are some laws on the books that aren't good that right right that people don't follow because it's against a personal decision or conscience of some sort. Of course, I'm not going to admit any rule breaking. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen times where laws seemed um, unjust in certain circumstances and, and following the letter of the law um, perhaps was um, not the most beneficial when the spirit of the law would have been better. But then how, who determines like when it's OK to do that? Well, when individuals determine that on their own, that's when they get in trouble with the written law. But you have um, you have demonstrations where people disobey the law, but it's for a cause of some sort. I think uh, recently, the past few years of the Arab Spring, uh, individuals collectively coming together to rise up against you know what they thought was uh, unjust circumstances. So um, one thing I've heard, like when people talk about the the behavior of business, right? Uh, sometimes the business doesn't businesses are treated like individuals in some senses, but when they be- behave outside of any sort of like personal code it's oftentimes excused i feel in our culture in our broader culture in excused by the fact that they're kind of going for the objective of the game which is to get money so if they can do that if they do that and they follow the law it's okay regardless of whatever sort of personal code they might be breaking if they were an individual i a lot of it just comes down to collectively they just have more power so they you know businesses can essentially do what they want as long as they're bringing in income that's all that's all people seem to care about when i say people i mean governments so you know they're treated in some circumstances as an individual and in some circumstances as a business and it seems like they get the best of both worlds now i i think but i think one of the reasons they're able to do whatever they want is because the culture kind of gives them a pass you know, and I don't. I don't think that necessarily was always the case. I. I think I hear more and more. You know, if if someone says, "Well, I don't like what they're doing, so I'm not going to shop there," someone else will kind of like cut them down for that because they feel like the business is perfectly should be. That that's like a just way of acting to just go after profit. <laughs> And I think a lot of people often think, "Well, I'm just one person. They're not going to care if it's just me who doesn't shop there." So then they they can't hold to their convictions because they figure, well, it's not going to matter anyway. I'm just one person. Right. Or Walmart's the only store in town. So. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, issue three. And this one is not really written as a question. It's it's posed as a versus, okay? And you can all decide. Social code versus personal code versus law. So we have these three different elements here. Which one wins? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, what are the victory conditions? <laughs> victory conditions <laughs> are, if you're making a decision in all three... Um, oh, I like, see. Okay. What do you do? Hmm. For me, it's usually a personal code, um, but it stays pretty well within the code of law, I would say, for the most part. But definitely personal more than more than social. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is that it would be personal if, if we were to rank them. It would be personal, but then the code of law, and then social. But for myself, anyway. But usually, not always. But usually, my personal code is. <laughs> pretty much on bar with where the law is. <laughs> right, so there's Almost not a lot always. of discrepancy there. I think, um, I think a lot of experience and age comes into this. I, I work with um, youth, and I know that youth are very influenced by social, uh, by their peers, and I think a lot of decisions they make would be based on that above their personal, and sometimes even above the law. I think as you gain some maturity, you understand reasons for laws and abiding by those. Even, even with the laws in place, I think um, you tend to go with a personal decision over laws at some point, but hopefully those personal decisions fall within the law. But I would have to rank them in the same order, uh, personal, law, and then social. But I, I could see how that would vary for uh, someone else. I, I think probably most people would rank it in the order that's, that we all have, right, when talking about it. But do you think in practice we actually do that? Like if you're at a... I think in practice, I think a lot of people would go social first because I think some people have a hard time standing up for, you know, even if their beliefs, if the majority of people are against that, they, you know, it's hard to be the one person who says, no, this is how I think it should be. So a lot of people, and particularly that's a valid point with age, with young kids, they'll just go along with what their friends will say. And I still think even as adults, a lot of people do that. Yeah, I think so. We were kind of talking about morality issues, but what if it's in terms of enjoyment? So um, what the group enjoys versus what the individual enjoys. In, in that instance, I, I would say social first, because I'm, I'm more willing to give up my personal so that the, so that the group is you know happy and entertained. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even I might even things. break laws to have some fun with the group. <laughs> <laughs> e- even even small disturb. Well, yeah, I, I would say in a, in a social context when it's not personal decisions, it's it. Yeah, it's probably the opposite. It's where socials first for for especially little things. You know, what's what would you like to eat for dinner? Well, I don't care. You know, what did, What does everyone else want? In context of this, what does everyone else want to play? You know, I'm, the personal would definitely be at the bottom of that list. Now, what if government comes into play? So um, we could say, well, I, I don't know if I want to give any examples. Since it, you know, it, it gets into illegality, right? <laughs> but if, if it's like the group it wants to do something, enjoys doing something, you maybe don't enjoy it, and the government doesn't want you to do it. What, what happens then? I think within the confines of what I'm comfortable doing, um, legality doesn't doesn't play a huge role in it. Yeah, I was trying to think of an instance where the law would come first in our scenario above the other two, and I couldn't think of one. But I see countries and cultures around the world where the fear of government is so strong that people you know, abide by the rule first above and beyond what any social or personal decision there might be. And I think that's one advantage we have living where we live is we don't necessarily have that fear of government. So we're okay kind of moving that down on the list of priorities at times because we don't we don't necessarily have that built in fear. Yes, we, we value uh, independence and freedom so much that even as we respect the law, we respect person's individual rights and their freedom of expression, you know, above and beyond everything else. Very good. It's time for us to make our decision. So I'm, I'm going to reread the scenario. So in case you forgot, but um, it's a big multiplayer game. Dog, that's who we are. We're dog. Dog makes a non-aggression pact with Moose. It, uh, is it, is, is that verbal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, it's not written down. Though, but well, I, I was wondering like, if, if dog, is it, is it known to the rest of the players? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be, you know, it could be a game like Risk, I imagine, or, you know, any game like that where you can kind of have this kind of free, freewheeling deals going. I, so they I agree not to sure for each other. We decided and, and are sticking to 
or if it's something that we had we had said. Right. No, they, they agreed to it. Okay. Um, and so the personal code kind of comes in here. Dog believes that if dog agrees to do something, dog should do it. Um, dog's given his loyalty or her loyalty to moose. Um, so moose, you know, having dog to kind of not hurt a section of moose's forces or whatever, moose is able to like kind of go forward and is very close to winning the game. The other players, hey, dog, you should stop moose. You should be trying to win the game. What does dog do? I know that I value, I value the personal choice, personal and so I would value that person's value choice that person to stick by their agreement, by their agreement. even though. Even though I might not be pleased with the action. I would still, I would still um, support that decision, and not try, not try to socially influence them by, you know, berating them or uh, making them change their mind. I, I would go along with that. Yeah, I think I think a pact is useless unless it's adhered to. So I, I would definitely kind of stick stick to the guns. Yeah, yeah, I agree. By, by not fighting, <laughs> stick to the guns by not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always more pleasant to not have to fight. Um, all right, sounds like we're kind of unanimous. Dog, dog, stays with food and doesn't really go for the goal of the game. Now, I'm, 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 I'm thinking there's a luxury of additional games or more plays in the future, but if this were something that was on the line you know, the last time, I'm thinking of maybe a big um, poker win where you know, you're going to get some monetary uh, uh, compensation from it, and uh, it could change in that regard, but as long as uh, it's just a game, it's just for entertainment, that would be my choice. Right. So long as there's an expectation that there might be future games with this yes. particular game. Yes. And that's, that's a, that's a very interesting subject that I, I don't want to go down that that tangent right now because I think we could we could go we could go into that in a future episode I think uh, games always have their their strict ending right and everyone moves towards that ending but it loses some simulative properties because of that because most right. situations right. continue yep. you know you, yep. it's not like everyone just vanishes after the game ends right in, in our world anyway, or, even, that was great. or even knowing that there is an end there is an end Right, right, right. Yeah, knowing the end is coming at this time, you're going to behave differently than if you. Right. right. So within the context of topic one, then, if 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 our if own parameters within the game were to not break any packs we made during the game, does it does it break the game if we stick to that pack, even though it allows moves to win? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. It, it seems like we kind of came up with a different answer from the, in the decision and the topic. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. No, I don't think it does break, it. break it. Which kind of goes against what I, said against what I said earlier. But even with the example that I gave, example that I, gave I was laughing right there along with the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just a, it was another chapter of the game that made for a hilarious um, story. Story. <laughs> but it definitely was not the game that I sat down and tended to play that round. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah, that's kind of why we game though too, right? If we if we knew what the game was going to be like when we sat down, it wouldn't be as interesting to us. It's when the game is unexpected that you know it becomes memorable. Yeah, it becomes memorable. Very true. Very true. We'll take the game okay. survive, survive, for example. For example, our our daughter, our daughter will not, will not go, after go after me because she's afraid that I will then retaliate. Because I am, <laughs> I have, I'm like she's no holds barred. I'm very competitive. So I'm thinking I would never make this pattern in the first place. But. <laughs> <laughs> But it still is an enjoyable game, but it does kind of change things in a way because then she, in turn, goes after Jason because she won't go after me. I go after everyone. I, I'm, I go after everyone. So it does kind of change the game, but it doesn't break it. It's still... It's still an enjoyable, still enjoyable, enjoyable game. And especially enjoyable for you since you have the advantage, you have the advantage of an ally of sports. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But no, it doesn't, it doesn't break the game at all. I, I'm gonna, I've been trying to just ask questions and not give a lot of opinions here, but I would say it actually makes the game more interesting to me when when people have their own like kind of idiosyncrasies that they, they follow when playing. I don't want my opponents all to be rational, like Computron. <laughs> Those social dynamics that, that, to me, are what makes makes the game interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I want to remind the listeners that they get to decide who won this conversation, and that person gets a prize. Not the listeners, but us, one of us who wins. 
And then, um, is, does anyone have anything else you want to say before we start singing? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying you're sorry. I'm sorry for singing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron, give us singing? a beat. Booch, 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 Oh, <laughs> <laughs>